Valorant is a young game project which has achieved serious results over the two years of its existence, not only as an independent game but also as an esports discipline. Its numbers are coming close to its main competitor, CSGO. According to Player Counter, in June 2022, between 700,000 and 900,000 people play Valorant concurrently, while CSGO average numbers of players were between 800,000 and 900,000. Because of Valorant's popularity, many pro players from other games moved to the Riot shooter. Today we're going to tell you a story about how Valorant evolved from a clone of CSGO to the main first person shooter in North America. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to make the Good Game Republic team really happy. Make yourself some tea, lean back in your chair, and turn up the volume to the maximum. Now let's begin. The development of Valorant started in 2014. The original idea for Valorant is credited to the game director, Joe Ziegler. The game was created on the Unreal Engine. Therefore, the development of an online shooter was carried out for quite a long time, more than seven years. Valorant was announced with the codename Project A on October 15, 2019 through Riot Games' 10th anniversary edition of their Riot Please blog, which celebrated 10 years since the release of their multiplayer online video game, League of Legends. In an announcement video, Anna Supercake Stonlin, the executive producer, describes the game as a character-based tactical shooter which focuses on competitive aspects and includes precise gunplay. She also states that the game takes place on a beautiful near-future Earth and features a lethal cast of characters, each with their unique abilities. Valorant was released in June 2020. The new game received a lot of attention from the community and professional gamers as well, since the game project itself combined something more than just a first-person shooter. After Riot Games began beta testing the game and gave players around the world the opportunity to participate in the development and improvement of the game, for some reason many people decided that Valorant would be a Counter-Strike killer, although there were no prerequisites for this. As expected, the game was not easy, but very creative. The uniqueness of Valorant's gameplay was that the game combined a futuristic version of CSGO with elements from another Riot project, League of Legends. The game has some various characters that have certain abilities that players can use directly in the match and a set of weapons that is very similar to the set present in CS, but not entirely. The features of the characters make the game dynamic and interesting in terms of the diversity of tactical moves. The lore of the game is connected with League of Legends. According to the plot, Valorant takes place on a version of Earth in the near future following an event known as First Light. This event spans the entire globe, leading to big transformations in life, technology, and how governments operate. However, select people across the globe start to gain abilities stemming from this massive event. These gifted individuals are called Radiance. In response to the First Light, a shadow organization founded the Valorant Protocol, which pulls together agents from all over the world. These agents consist of Radiance and other individuals equipped with Radiant technology. Due to the backstories of these characters, the Valorant team features interesting dynamics as the individuals not only sometimes know each other, but they also come from a wide spectrum of backgrounds ranging from crime to the military. Almost immediately, many streamers, bloggers, and just gamers began comparing Valorant with Counter-Strike, often criticizing CS for dullness and lack of updates, the community began to criticize CS very strongly. Furthermore, part of the community was right about the seriousness of Valorant as a long-term project, since Riot Games, unlike Valve, is really actively engaged and developing their game, constantly adding something new and also attracting players, giving them the opportunity to express their opinion about certain updates. In this regard, Valorant gained some fame even before it officially became an esports discipline. A few months later after release, many North American players began to actively move from CSGO to Valorant, which was considered by Riot Games as an esports game. The reason for the move was simple. There were no opportunities for Tier 2 players in NA and CSGO. Over time, the Europeans began to move too. Some of them we know for their Counter-Strike achievements. Scream, who was a one-tap legend, Banana. Flash. I have one more flash. Two more banana. Flash. Flashing. Woo! Why so? 
joined Liquid's Valorant roster and became one of the best players of the game. Mixwell, who was one of the most notable members of the Spain CSGO scene of this time, moved to Valorant and became a permanent IGL of G2. They don't have weapons here, so trying to get it done at short range, and they are going to be low armored. You see Mixwell takes care of Draken instantly. So that's going to be the jet ult shut down. Mixwell finds two, three, oh. four. Angel, who founded and showed simple to the general public, in Valorant captained FPX Phoenix and won VCT 2022 Stage 2 Masters Copenhagen analog of CSGO Major Tournament. In the American region, Valorant began to develop much earlier than in the rest. So the game is extremely popular in countries such as the USA, Canada, Britain, and Latin America, especially Brazil. It was there that the first tournaments, including LAN tournaments, began to be held. The well-known American organizations such as FaZe Clan, Cloud9, Optic Gaming, and others also contributed to the development of the game as an esports discipline, creating various events for this game. Then, towards the end of 2020, there was a series of tournaments in different regions called First Strike, organized by Nerd Street Gamers and sponsored by Riot Games. At the same time again, the main influx of the audience was from Asia and Europe, gaining new players every day. Riot Games in turn decided to come up with an unusual tournament structure, thanks to which any team could prove themselves and get into the world championship called VCT Champions. To do this, Riot came up with the Valorant Champions Tour system for different regions. For now, there were two seasons. The essence of the idea was that the passage to the main stage depended on the results in turn based tournaments. To begin, your team has to take prize places at the Challenger stage to qualify for the Masters. The debut Valorant Major was held in May 2021 under the name VCT 2021 Stage 2 Masters Reykjavik with a prize pool of $600,000. Champion of the event became Sentinels with Canadian Young Star 10s in its roster. The tournament received good reviews from the gaming community, and of course, one cannot fail to note the high quality organization organization of the tournament and its holding. In this regard, Riot Games tried 100% and the merit of the players who supported and advertised the project is also great as never before. The second major VCT 2021 Stage 3 Masters Berlin also did not go unnoticed. The prize pool was raised to $700,000. Thanks to the victory of the Russian team Gambit Esports at the tournament, the games began to slowly gain popularity in the post-Soviet countries, mainly in the Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. The outcome of VCT 2021 was the World Championship. VCT Champions 2022 played in Berlin. 16 teams, 2 Masters Champions, 10 best teams of regional rankings, and 4 last chance qualified squads were fighting for a $1 million prize pool. The main favorite of the tournament was Gambit, but in the grand final it was beaten by the second best EMEA team, Ascend. In 2022, Riot Games decided to create a series of regional leagues called Valorant Regional League (VRL). The point was to develop the Tier 2 scene, as well as the development and boost the average team level of the game in different parts of the world. By the way, the community liked this idea as it is a great opportunity for young players and emerging organizations to showcase their skills to start in small tournaments. In 2022, there were seven organized divisions. Spanish, French, Northern for the UK and the Scandinavian region, East for Eastern Europe, MENA for the Arab countries in the Middle East, Turkish and DACH for Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and Luxembourg. All these tournaments are aimed at discovering new talents and future Valorant stars from different continents. In 2022, Valorant Champions Tour became much greater earlier due to COVID restrictions. Masters and Champions were played offline without viewers, but in the current season, Masters and Champions plan to be played at large arenas in front of the crowds of fans. But the hype of Valorant in some regions was so big that Riot decided to organize even Challengers stage to play in arenas with thousands of viewers. For example, VCT Japan Challengers Stage 2 playoffs were played at Saitama Super arena with 10,000 seats, but the main tournaments, Masters and Champions became a real treat of esports. The champion of the VCT 2022 Stage 1 Masters Reykjavik became Optic Gaming, a North American team, but the Masters in the Copenhagen won FPX, the EMEA team. These two championships were played at a LAN in front of 10,000 to 20,000 fans of Valorant.
Warrant Esports. Now we are waiting for the VCT Champions 2022 Istanbul, where 16 best teams, unlike before, only 8 teams come through regional rankings. Six through last chance qualifiers will try to win the tournament and go down in history. It's important to notice that by August 2022, Valorant is ranked in the top 10 best esports games in the world and ranked fifth in tournament views. And this in just some two years. In any case, we wish good luck to this project and maybe after a while, it will top the list and become the number one in esports. And that's it. Did you like the video? If we missed something, write about it in the comments. Support your favorite champions, play Valorant, and don't skip Chamber after the nerf. He's still a good hero. Peace.